Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Bite Sized Otaku, and this is Eleonora, the Violet Bloody Finger, who was one of the deadliest bloody fingers under Luminary Moog. But is her build any good? Well, like the video and give it to me bite size. So Eleonora wears the Drake Knight set, which I'm pretty cold on in terms of fashion, considering the armour comes with giant wings which flap around, and the helmet has this butt plug protruding from the top. This will provide us with good defensive stats leaning towards fire, and since we aren't using any talismans in this vanilla version of the build, we won't benefit from an increase to our offensive or defensive capabilities with a talisman like Lord of Blood's Exaltation. For our weapon, Eleonora uses her signature pole blade, which comes with the weapon art, Bloodblade Dance. This twirls us around like a ballerina on steroids to slice and dice enemies like a ninja, building up bleeds simultaneously. And while the regular moves are effective, we lack any kind of hyper armor, meaning we can be easily knocked out of attacks, including the blood blade dance, providing we aren't well into the animation. But on the plus side, we benefit from a passive bleed buildup of 77 and the weapon scales with arcane, meaning we can go heavy on that particular stat. Then for our seal, we have the dragon communion seal, which we can then use to cast a gil's flame and grail's roar. This seal is fantastic because it benefits from our arcane investment making it perfect for bleed builds. I'll cover our two incantations in the strategy section where we can expand on the text in action, as they do provide us with some much needed versatility and act as rocket launches for our otherwise modest build. For our stats I've gone with 60 vigor and 25 endurance, which will allow me to dump 50 points into arcane so we can maximise our incantations damage and bleed build up. The weapon benefits mostly from dexterity, but arcane has more utility for this build. Our 21 dexterity is a requirement for the pole blade, while our 28 faith is a requirement for both of our incantations, and this is based on the level 137 samurai, with equipment upgraded just one level below the maximum, which will save you a rare ancient dragon smithing stone. So how can we use this mix of blood and dragon style attacks to destroy our foes? using the limited resources we have at our disposal. Well our combat style requires spacing to land a hit and to avoid being hit, so we can maintain our advantage and not become staggered out of our attacks. We have a nice running light attack which can thrust for decent range, then we have the blood blade dance which can stagger and build up bleed on enemies while dishing out some fantastic damage at the same time. On bosses, this will just build up bleed for massive damage, but it can also leave you exposed for a strike since bosses don't stagger easily. The Gil's Flame is a fantastic incantation, it deals massive damage, it can be turned like a turret, it's a nightmare to dodge, and it can be aimed down, again like a turret. The range is also good, but it won't reach the end of the arena, and thank god it doesn't. It can also do pretty good damage against bosses from a distance. Our jumping heavy attack is a thrust into the ground, which is always my least favourite kind of heavy, but it's useful nonetheless. Our guard is just a normal guard, which I never use, as it's a bad idea to try and block with a weapon like this, unless you have a monumental advantage. Our backstep light attack will thrust, while our charge heavy will do a kung fu ballerina twirl, followed by a slash, which I hardly use due to the odd animation and the limitations to my mobility. But one of my favourite incantations in this build is Grail's Roar, which will damage enemies within an area of effect which also works through walls, and it will decrease their attack by 20% and their defence by 10% for 60 seconds. The cost is high and we can only get one cast in, but if it lands, it will send enemies flying back, often doing half their health. It also shares a dragon head animation with a gill's flame, meaning you can often deceive your opponents. But despite the hard to see hitboxes, it can be dodged, leaving you exposed for a backstab for the duration of the animation. Now let's talk about our weaknesses. While we're quick and nimble, anything Greatsword can pretty much slap or poke us into a meatloaf, as we can't trade attacks, and our ranged options are limited, which can leave us wide open for a counter. This also goes for quick attacks like Beast Roar, which can often hit us before we finish performing our attack, or smaller weapons which can stagger us due to our lack of poise. And that lack of poise, is a major blow to what could otherwise be a fantastic vanilla build. I'm not sure why this armour has such low poise, despite being made in the likeness of dragons, but I'm tired of having to look like a clown to get some decent poise. And you have to be careful to not get hit while attacking, and be careful you manage your FP, as this build will suck us dry. 
But despite its flaws, I think this build can hold up well to win fights in the arena as well as being effective against bosses and enemies. We benefit from bleed and dragon incantations alongside a weapon that uses a unique animation to apply pressure. We may struggle with poison hyper armor issues alongside major limitations to our casting and our ability to move strategically during long attack animations. I'll be releasing an improved version which makes use of new equipment, talismans and incantations while sticking to the overall theme. So let me know your thoughts on the build and of course subscribe. This is Bite Size Dotaku and I hope you enjoyed.